Good morning, family. It's a blessed day. It's always a blessed day, but today is that day that we are celebrating his rise. We are celebrating his rise. You know, before I get into this, uh, this sermon this morning, I just want to make a couple of things. Let me just share a couple of things. Last week, I know that there are many people that were not able to hear the sermon because we had a technical problem. But the sermon, that sermon ties into this one. And so I just want to share with you that it was titled True Religion. And if you look at James 1.27, it tells you truly what true and pure, undefiled religion is. And it's really just what Christ came and did and just demonstrated to each and every one of us. And that was love and serving. Very simply put, none of this extra stuff that folks put on religion, what you have to do, what you don't need to do, all of these different things, we follow Christ. We follow Christ. And so it's just an honor just to speak on this day about celebrating his rise. But see, understand that we are celebrating the promise and the rising of our Father. But how are we doing it? You know, I, I during the week, and again, I just got to get this because I, I got to get this out. During the week, it was asked of me several times, what are y'all doing? Are you doing something special? You know, it's Easter. It's all these different things. And I, I couldn't help but think to myself, what is it that we're supposed to do that's different other than serving our Father? What am I supposed to do that is different other than what we should be doing each and every day, which is serving God, our one true God? So what would you have me do? And so as I think about, I thought about through the weeks what was going on, and much like every other holiday, because, you know, they, they want to call this a holiday, it's, well, look at the Easter sale that's going on. Go get this and that for the kids. Do all of these different things that have absolutely nothing to do with serving our Father. So again, I ask back when it comes to true religion, true religion, what are we doing? What are we doing? So when folks say, you know, well, what are you doing special? I say, I'm serving our Father and I'm doing exactly what he has called us to do really since our birth and walking this earth. That's what we are do to do. That is our purpose. So, yes, we want to take a day to honor our Father. And we don't know that this is the exact day, but we do set things to honor. But in this instance, I challenge each and every one of you to serve our Father every day. Every day. Every time that we have a breath. Thank you, Lord. It's a time that we should say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You see, the promise that was given was a promise that was kept. Man can't do that for you. Man breaks promises all the time. And when I say man, I'm speaking women too. I mean human, human kind. Promises are broken all the time. We put so much faith in what someone says they're going to do, yet they do not do. Just like these sales. You put so much faith in Oh, there's a sale going on, not realizing that they raised the price and then dropped it back down in the sale. Are you really getting a sale? So let's stop thinking about what are we doing special and start just serving our Father each and every day the way He truly intended to, the true way, the undefiled way. See, all that stuff that we're hearing out in the air on the, on the TVs and what have you, that's the defiled way of serving. Most times I see these ads and they don't even speak the name Jesus in them. The whole reason for what we are celebrating. But I celebrate him every day. We all should celebrate him every day. Just thanking him, just thanking him for giving us this glory. See, it's not about one day out of the year, but it's an everyday celebration. It should be an everyday celebration for us. So as I go into this sermon, because again, it ties right into this. You know, I just, it, it really struck me, and I'm sorry that if, it, if, if it's cutting one, just realize that's not me. That's the Holy Spirit that's just saying, hear him, hear him. 
title of this sermon is, Are You Fruitful? There's actually another title, but prayerfully y'all will get that other part of it as I go through this. But the question is that I have for you today is, how fruitful are you? How fruitful are you? You see, we're celebrating this day right now, but many folks, I know we get that, uh, it, it was shocked. Someone said, uh, I said, I'm not preaching on the cross right now. I'm not preaching about the resurrection. What I'm speaking about to you today is really for you. That's what Christ did. He came to serve you. So what I want to speak to you today about is, are you fruitful? How are we truly celebrating what he did? What are you doing in your lives right now? What are you doing in your lives right now? Are you fruitful today? You see, Jesus, while coming out of Bethany, came across a fig tree, and it showed some promise. This fig tree showed some promise. It had some leaves on it, and he thought to himself, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go get a fig. I'm, 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 I'm hungry. His body was craving. That physical body was craving. He says, I'm hungry. So he thought he was going to eat from there, that tree, yet there was no fruit. There was no fruit there. It was bare. The nourishment needed for our bodies, that's what he was wanting at that time. It was bare. But think about it in the spiritual sense. How fruitful are you? Are you bare right now? Are you producing? You see, he was looking for production. He's not looking for lip service. He's looking for production out of each and every one of us. You know, there's so many folks out there that are fruitless. You know, that goes back to last week's sermon about true religion. There are so many folks out there that are just fruitless, not producing whatsoever. Yet they will stand before you and speak a word that sounds something like God, but truly is not of God. We've got to be very careful about that. They speak, but they have nothing to give. So the question is, what's being done through those individuals? Prayerfully, what you are seeing is really what the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to you is what's going on with that individual when they're speaking. You're hearing these words, but you're saying, no, God, that is not true. That is not your word. I'm going to go out and I'm going to be a testament and a testimony. Give a testimony to someone else. Give the true word. You see, sometimes we have to see these folks for who they truly are. God came down as Christ in the physical for us. And he said, I'm going to shed, my blood is going to be shed for each and every one. My children, those who are called by my name, I'm going to shed. I'm going to be broken, beaten, battered. So how fruitful are you today? How fruitful are you today? See, we praise him for what he's done and we continue to do, but there's many that lack integrity and trueness behind. Sometimes, a lot of times their words, but oftentimes even their own actions. So you have to watch that and be careful. What's the motive behind that? What's the motive behind what someone is doing? I get questioned all the time. You know, you guys are doing so many different things. What's the motive behind it? And I say, well, the motive for me is just serving our father. Well, do you, do you want something for it? No, I don't want anything. Does the church need something? The church is thriving. What folks do with their tithes and offerings, we give it back. That's how this works. It's nothing that we're doing to try to gain anything other than just serving God. But I will share this because there is a promise. There is nothing here on this earth that anyone else can offer me greater than what our Father has offered. There is nothing on this earth that anyone else can offer that will be greater than anything our Father has offered. So what are we doing? How will we proceed? Are you being fruitful? You see, being fruitful means that when someone is coming to hear the word, you have a good word for them. What is your purpose? Share that good word with them. Share God's word with them. Share the love of God. Share the love of Christ. Share what the Holy Spirit speaks through you. Are you fruitful? Are you being fruitful? You see, Mark 11, 12, and 14, it says, Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a far fig, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. You see, in verse 14, this is actually a curse. If y'all understand this, I said, are you fruitful? But then 
verse 14 goes on and says, in response, Jesus said to it, he's speaking to the tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Understand that if you are not doing any good, then what good for the kingdom are you? If you are not producing fruit, what good for the kingdom are you? We've got to start producing. Christ didn't go to the cross just to say, I'm going to go to the cross, lay down my life, and maybe, see, his words don't come back void at all. He says there's a promise for each and every one of us that will submit here and do. We spoke this past Wednesday night about being doers, kind of going off of what we were speaking of last week, being doers of the word, knowing what the word is saying, but then also putting it into practice. You ever notice sometimes that, you know, you, you're told someone, if you're, if you're a, kind of like me, I have this thing about me where there's certain things you can tell me, but until I actually do it and practice it, I'm not any good at it. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really good at it at all. So I really need to actually do. Do you know when you put your faith into practice, how many blessings upon blessings upon blessings show up for you? But not only you, they show up for other people. It's putting it into practice, being fruitful, being fruitful for others. See, the question is now, are you cursed? Or are you fruitful? Which one would you choose? You see, I don't want to be that fig tree that's sitting there that, you know, it looks pretty. It's got leaves and it has nothing to truly, you know, nothing to truly offer whatsoever. I don't want to be that person. You should not want to be that person. For everything else, why we celebrate today, why would you want to be that purpose, that, that person that is not producing? Looking good, but producing not. That's not the design of what our Father wants, wanted for us and still wants for us. You see, God can work with you if you let him. You see, there's a lot of folks that will say, well, you know, I've done so many things in my past. There's no way I can be any good to our Father. Well, see, he works with that. There are many folks that came out of dark places and then shone the light, and he's working with them. You think about Paul. What was he doing? What was he doing all before he was, what, enlightened? He was enlightened. You see, once you're, once you're enlightened, it's so hard to turn back. The flesh is always going to want to turn back. But see, you have to start speaking life into your own self, letting the life speak into your spirit so it begins to touch your soul. You see, the body, the body and the spirit, there's a tug of war going on. It's pulling for your soul. It's pulling for your soul. But if you're speaking life into your spirit, you're getting that light shine into your spirit. Feed your soul the nourishment that is truly needed. Feed that nourishment. You see, your crown has been promised to you. You see, it's a crown of life. It's also called a crown of righteousness. It's been promised to you. Christ went to the cross for you, us to all have it. You see, that no longer do you have to worry about, well, I can't get to God. That veil was torn. That veil was torn and the freedom you have. So how will you use that freedom? How will you choose to use that freedom? Do we sit back and we just say, I don't need to do anything? I pray that's not you. I pray that that is not you. I pray that you're the one that stands up and says, I want to go to work. I want to run like in Samuel. Samuel, there was, a, there, there, there was an armor bearer and he was, he was running, trying to run and tell the king the victory had happened. He says, I want to run. It's one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. And I'm kind of shrugging because I got so many favorites. Because he gives us so many favorites. Amen. He gives us so many favorites. But I want to run. I want to run. That's what we should be doing to be fruitful for our father. Just run. Just run. Wherever he's telling you to run, run. Run. You see, there's no crown without the cross. We know that. This cross here, sits here as a symbol to let you know what was done, to remind us of what was done. You see, I say remind because there are folks out there that they kind of understand. They see a cross. Many will put a cross on their necks, tattoo it on their bodies, put it on their cars, and then forget. 
forget the true meaning behind it. And what I mean by the true meaning, meaning is being an actual doer. Not just saying, I believe in Christ and I believe in the cross, but understanding that there's no crown without the cross. There's no glory for us without the cross. That's His. He did it for us. So again, I ask you, how are you honoring Him today? How are you honoring Him, that, that freedom? How are you honoring Him, not just today, but each and every day? How are you walking? How are you walking? Cursed or fruitful? See, Christ is seeking the redeemed. That means you. The price was already paid. It was already paid. As I go to 1 Timothy 2, 20-21, 20 through 21, it says, but in a great house. See, this is a great house, meaning not just in this physical here, but a great body of believers out there. It's a great house. It's his house. There are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. How many of y'all just want to be prepared for every good work? For every good work. You see, it says in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. It's just like any other family. You have some folks that are gold and silver. Then you have some folks that are wood and clay. Gold and silver, I challenge you to pick up our wood and clay folks and help them out. Help them out. Because see, much like our scripture tells us, I don't want anyone to fall short. I don't want anyone to fall short of their promise. So we're to help people. We're to encourage them. We're to lift them up. See, I, I think about encouragement, and I, I got to think this time of year, I get very discouraged and not wanting to encourage folks that I should. What do I mean by that? I mean that... I go to the gym, and right around the first part of the year, everybody wants to come and show up because that's their New Year's resolution. See, that's that one day they say out and they say, I'm going to go and work on my physical body. And they stick around. And I got to be careful about this because sometimes I do, and I got to kind of rebuke myself and be kind of... Uh, 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 get get better about it. But sometimes I say, well, I can't wait until April rolls around. That's when people start falling off and I can get a better parking space than what I had. You see, that's what I mean about folks in trying to celebrate certain days. We've got to celebrate every day. Once you put things into practice, well, see, what I've learned is it's not just a way of life is the life that I live of serving our Father. So it's the same thing as when I go to the gym, I have a routine I have to put it into practice. And each day, when most times when people call and they want to look for me, they know where I am because I put it into practice. I don't know how else to do it. But see, the thing that I got to get better at is start encouraging all those other ones to keep on showing up, even if it's going to cost me a parking space. That's okay. But see, when it comes to God's word, keep on showing up, keep on running. I'm going to keep on encouraging each and every day. Each and every time you talk to me, there's going to be something of encouragement, something to go follow up with God about, something to say, what are, where's your assignment? Y'all have been hearing me say this lately. What is your assignment? What does God have for you to do? What should you be doing right now? What should you be doing tomorrow? Start planning out what you should be doing. You want a life-changing moment in your life? You want a life-changing moment? Follow Christ. Start following and doing. Put it into practice each and every day. See, he didn't go to the cross for nothing. He didn't go to the cross for nothing. He didn't die for nothing, and he certainly didn't come back for nothing. It was a promise made, and it was a promise kept. See, there's so many people who are called by his name, and you know when they answer, they need to answer when he calls. See, there's some that will remain lip service only. See, the celebration should be ongoing in our hearts. Have y'all ever had a moment in time when your heart just leaped? And I'm not talking about that leap when it's, well, it, you know, they say, they, they call it atrial fib or they just it skips a beat. I'm talking about that leap that it just leaps in happiness. If you've ever felt that or never felt that, let me tell you, it is a warming and ooh, fire type feeling in your body. It is 
almost indescribable. Almost indescribable. You see, that's the celebration that should be going on in our hearts. You know, it's not the time for just pageantry, for walking around. I've watched folks walk around. They got their, you know, priestly garments on and they're, you know, blessing folks. And I'm thinking, you know, every day, every day we need to be doing these things every single day. And let me tell you, it's not just for the priest alone, because God says we are a royal priesthood. So that means each and every one of you count yourself as a priest. If you call if you are called by his name and you answer those calls that he's doing, that he's giving out. You see, God's plan was detailed, was detailed. And many don't understand that it was planned from even before the earth was formed, even before it was formed. That plan was detailed. It is still continuing on in this day. You see, that plan was announced during multiple periods of history. That plan was also manifested in physical at its appointed time. Jesus knew his assignment in God's plan. So why are we not all vessels of silver and gold? Jesus knew his assignment. What is yours? Are you gold and silver or are you wood and clay? Which one would you choose? So you have to understand about wood and clay. Wood decayed, clay melts away. Wood decays and clay melts away. But let me tell you about gold and silver. When you put it through the fire, it can be tested. But will you come, be, come out proven, true, and righteous? Will you come out being true and righteous at that time? Understand that y'all should be looking for the gold and silver. But isn't that like humans anyway? Isn't that what humans really want anyway? They always look for the shiny, dangling stuff. Well, gold and silver is what it is. That's what we should strive for. But I'm not talking about this physical gold and silver. I'm not talking about just the physical. I'm saying make yourself of that. Make yourself of that to go through the fire, be tested by fire. And knowing that our Father is going to receive you because after you come out, you've been proven. You've been proven righteous. See, that's the type of stability. Everybody likes stability. So I sit here, I don't, you know, I don't like the, the whole wishy-washy thing. You know, I, and I love what, what the scripture tells us about let your yes be yes and your no be no. See, that's what our father says. His yes is his yes. His no is his no. But see, when you come out, you've been tested. You've been proven. And we thank God and we just say glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. See, one, people that are calling to you to do contrary to what you know are true, those folks will fall away. See, that's the wood and the clay. They're going to want you to go somewhere else. They're going to want you to do other things. They're going to want you to sit there and say, you know, God is not God. God is not true. God does, is not real. How many times have you heard that statement before? And each time is so interesting that even in this day, science is proving that God is real. History is proving everything that was written right here was real. You see, it's funny. It's a thing about folks that are wishy-washy. They need to have something that's concrete and evidence. See, Scripture tells us that what faith truly is, things that are not seen, things that are not seen. You see, our faith should be strong. That's where that gold and silver come in. What type of person are you? How fruitful are you? Are you sharing that? See, I don't want to walk around and, and just picture because I know the tree can't walk, but I don't want to walk around and be like the tree, cursed. Because that's what truly that was. He said, let no one eat from you ever again. You see, that's the thing. If you put it into, let's put it into the human parts here. If someone is not fruitful, then he's saying, let no one hear from you ever again. Let you not be one that someone is listening to. Let them not even really see you. Receive nothing from you because you are not fruitful for the kingdom. So again, I ask, how fruitful are you? How fruitful are you? you see, Christ was tempted. I said that we, we get pulled in different directions, but you understand, Christ was tempted. And many people, folks think as soon as they, they hear tempted, they say, oh, he was by the devil. Yes, yes, he was. He was tempted by the devil. But do you also realize he was tempted by his own disciples? The sons of thunder said, why don't you just call forth 
all the angels. Call, call, bring them down. Call for fire from heaven. He says, you know not of what spirit you are speaking. You see, when you have to understand what the mission is, you have to understand that it is not for him to do at that time. Sometimes it's not for you to do certain things at a particular time. In order for you to be fruitful, you first have to be submissive. You first have to submit yourself to, to our Father and then act on his word. So how fruitful are you? How fruitful are you? You see, Christ wasn't swayed. He knew the reward was much greater than what was here. What did I just say? There is nothing here on earth that can give. Any, no one can give anything greater than what our Father can give us. You tell yourself God wants you to, to hear that you... You tell yourself as God wants you to hear. Tell yourself that you are a vessel of silver and gold. Tell yourself that you are a producer. Tell yourself that you are fruitful. And let me tell you, when you start telling yourself these things, you become these things. Because God has already said, this is what I want from you. And people say, well, I, you know, if, if, if it's God's will, it is God's will. We don't have to say that. We don't have to rehash that anymore. It is his will. It is what he wants from you. He wouldn't have died on the cross for us if it was not what he wanted. He wanted to open himself up and bring us closer to him. This is the reason for this. Bring us closer to him so we can begin to be more fruitful for him. You see, how, how he, he didn't go to the cross for the plan to fail. He doesn't have any failing plans. God has no failing plans. You are not a failed plan. Folks will tell you all kinds of things that you are, but trust me and believe this. God loves you. You are not a failing plan. So let me say this. Are you cursed or are you fruitful? You see, that's the part of that, 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 uh, that, that, that sermon title. You see, it's not on the board there. It's here in my notes here because that's what the title was. It truly was, are you fruitful or are you cursed? Sometimes folks want to get, they, they want to soft step and, and be you know, nice about things. But this is not the time to be nice about things. When it comes to what God's plan is, just like when I, I've been saying lately, God says, mark the person. It's not time to be nice when it comes to doing what his word says, what he wants from each and us, uh, one of us to do. You see, when, I, when someone says curse, they say, oh, I'm going to run away from that. I don't want to have any parts of being cursed. Absolutely. You should do that. And when someone just says fruitful, oh, OK, yes, fruitful. I like that. That sounds nice. But see, we can't sit here and just sound nice. We've got to do exactly what God says and understand why God, why God did what he did, does what he does and did what he did. Knowing that you are not a failed plan. You have a choice, but God made, the, but Christ made the decision long ago, long ago, that we absolutely were worth what we are here for. And I love that. Thank you. I had already written this. Y'all don't know what I'm saying, but I'm just saying this. I had already written this, and I just love, love what was text to me. Not to, not about probably about an hour after I'd written the sermon, and I said, "Wow, tied right into it. Ties right into it." So I'm gonna tell you right now, yes. And I remember a sermon I preached. Are you worth it? So when y'all come out for uh, on the fourth, whew, prepare for a treat. Just prepare for a treat on that fourth Sunday. Whew, thank you, Lord. I just love when the Holy Spirit just puts people together. When the Holy Spirit speaks to one person over here, speaks to another over there, and then when they come right together, it's all joined in because it's not them. It is the connection. It is the true body. You see, as, as Scripture says, in a great house, in a great house, this is a great house. You have to understand that. See, you have a choice. You have a choice. We should be praising his holy name. Thank you, Lord, that you did what you did. You went to the cross for us. Not only did you just go to the cross for us, you came back and breathed your Holy Spirit into us. See, he didn't want us to be alone. See, it doesn't just stop right there. It didn't stop right there. He says, I want to be with you, so close to you that I want to place myself inside of you. How close is that? How close is that? That's intimacy in its true form. That is intimacy in its true form. That's a relationship that each and every one of us has. We've got to keep listening, keep listening, keep listening. I left this in your, in your bulletin this morning, and I'm going to start over there. It's in Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. It says, for it's impossible for those who were once enlightened 
and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. I mentioned that last week about true religion, about crucifying him all over again. It's sad when we do such things. It's sad when we don't realize that all has been paid already. We got to go back and do this again to him. Why would we want to do that? Why would he want to do that? He loves us, but we don't need to crucify him all over again. Once you were once enlightened, once you have been enlightened, walk in that light. Fight hard to stay away from the darkness that once consumed us. You have been enlightened now. There is no reason for us to turn back. At any for the earth which comes upon it, bears herbs useful for those by whom it's cultivated, receiving blessings from God. You see, the Old Testament speaks of us needing the thirst. And I say this all the time. I talk about this prerequisite. What do you need first? One of the things you need is to thirst. And as the scripture was telling us, the earth drinks in the rain that comes upon it. Because if you ever take a plant and look at the herbs and you, whatever you're growing in your yard, and I'm getting, thank you, I'm getting great tips on growing things and knowing what nourishment needs to go, how much water needs to be pressed into these plants, these little plants that just start growing. And I'm amazed at what they get, the nourishment and what they get. And then I always think about well, each time that we pour out, each time that we pour out, because that's what we're supposed to do, pour out what is given in us upon others and watch them grow. Do you know how many people I've seen begin to grow and blossom? They start to really hear from our Father. You see, it's kind of a picture when I look at these plants. It's the, it's the same process. You just watch them and you just kind of nourish them. You give them what they need, the water, the feeding, all of these things. You give them what they need. That's what we need to do with our, our folks. Give them what they need. You see, we thirst for you, Lord. Our, your word, your guidance, your wisdom, we thirst for you. Let them drink in what he provides and pass it on to others. You see, his sacrifice was not to be done over and over again. It's not to be done over and over again. What his sacrifice was for is to show one, show all. And how do we do that in this great house that we are in, this great family that we are in? I pray each and every one of you receiving this and will begin to go out. Know your assignment. Your first and foremost assignment is to praise his holy name. Praise him each and every day. Don't wait for well, it's Easter Sunday or it's Resurrection Sunday. All these different words, I'm going to tell you right now, they don't matter to me. What matters to me is what was gone, done on the cross, the, 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 the resurrection, and the fact that he is residing right here with us. You see, all everything that we do is God and him and him and us. Everything that we do, if we start to realize that more and more, we will realize that what is this true celebration? It's the celebration that we should be doing every single day. It's a celebration that we should be doing every single hour. Each time that something happens, praise God for it. It's not something that happened by uh, happenstance. It's not something that was by mistake. It's something that you needed to learn from it. It's something that we needed to grow from it. It's something that you needed to share with someone else for. It is no longer time for us to sit on the sidelines, sit on the bench. We've got to get up. We've got to get up. Rise. Rise with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the one that had him rise. We are the ones to rise as well. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. So why don't we rise? Be that vessel of gold and silver. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your...